For this video, we are going to look at depreciation and look at it, the th three of the different methods that you can use to depreciate. Uh, we will use the one example across these three different methods. Some of the important things we need to know when we're talking about depreciation, we need to know the cost of an asset, so simply how much we paid for the asset. Secondly, we need to know the useful life, and we'll look at a couple different ways. Uh, usually, that's a period of time that you expect to use the asset. We'll look at the salvage value, some call it the disposal value which is the expected value of an asset at the end of its useful life. And we also need to know which depreciation method we're using, which we'll look at in the following slides here. A couple other important things we need to know, we need to know the carrying value. In terms of what, what, what is the carrying value, it's the value of the asset that's going to be on the balance sheet. So you need to take the asset and you need to subtract the contra asset that is associated with the asset. When we're talking about property, plant, and equipment, the contra asset is usually accumulated depreciation. Then we're also going to look at depreciable cost, which is the cost of the asset minus the salvage value. In other words, it's the value that you expect the asset to go down by over the course of the useful life. So as we look through the calculations, through the examples, I think that'll make a little bit more sense. So here's the example that we're going to follow. We use the exact same example three times. So we bought a company van on January 7th for $20,000 with a $5,000 salvage value. It tells you right away, we're not going to deal with mid-year, we're not going to deal with any t terms of months, we're just going to go with a 12-month year every year. We expect the van to have a useful life of five years, and we expect to get 100,000 miles out of this van. We are doing the straight line method. Again, there in the upper right-hand corner shows the exact same example. We need to look at what's the important information. First of all, we need to know what is the cost, and $20,000 is the cost of the van. Second of all, we need to know the salvage value, five grand. Our depreciable cost, we can cal calculate very quickly, 20 grand minus the five grand, means we've got a depreciable cost of $15,000. Useful life is going to be five years. So from there, how do we calculate our depreciation? We take our depreciable cost of $15,000 and we divide it by the useful life of five years. That gives us $3,000 every single 12-month period year. So if you look down at the bottom here, it shows you the table. This is how the, the depreciation table is laid out. We've got a beginning carrying value right there over on the upper left hand corner of the table twenty thousand dollars that was the cost of our asset we calculated depreciation annual depreciation is three thousand dollars every single year accumulated depreciation is simply all the depreciation that we have taken on the asset to the point uh, that we are at and then the end and carrying value is well, what should be on the balance sheet so as we go the first year three thousand dollars every year three thousand dollars in terms of depreciation and then we get to that ending carrying value at the far end of the asset $5,000. And you should recognize that $5,000 is exactly the same as the salvage value. So there's your straight line method. Next method we're going to look at is the double declining balance method, which might be a little bit more realistic in his take in terms of it puts a lot of the depreciation up at the front of the asset as opposed to just giving the same amount of depreciation every single period. So the important information, again, same example, cost is still $20,000, our salvage value is still $5,000, although you'll notice I'm not calculating a depreciable cost. Useful life is going to be five years, so we need to figure out, well, what is the straight line rate? Straight line rate is one over five. That means we take one-fifth normally for straight line every single year. Now, double declining balance, what you do is you take that one-fifth, the one over the five useful years, and multiply it by two. So our double declining rate will be two-fifths. In order for us to calculate our depreciation every single year, we will need to take the carrying value of the asset and multiply it by that double declining balance, which are, in our example will be two-fifths. So here's the table. Let me kind of walk you through the calculation. You can see the beginning carrying value is 20 grand. So if I'm going to calculate that depreciation in that first year, I'm going to take the 20 grand and multiply it by two-fifths. That gives me the $8,000. You'll see then you've got accumulated depreciation of eight ending carrying value of 12. Second year, I've got a beginning carrying value of $12,000, so how do I calculate the depreciation? Again, carrying value, $12,000 times the two-fifths, the 40%, and that will give you $4,800. Uh, we get into that third year, it gets a little funky because if I take $7,200 and multiply it by two-fifths, I will end up below my salvage value, but I can't. So the rule in double declining balance method is that once you are going to go below the salvage value on the next year, you need to change to straight line method. It gets a little funky when you have a salvage value 
in double declining balance. Usually in the real world, you just assign a zero in these situations, but for academic pur purposes, we'll learn this. So you can see last year, we need to take 2,000, uh, how much is that? 2,100 or so dollars more of depreciation to actually get to the, 2,200 dollars more, excuse me, depreciation to get to the $5,000 over the course of the last three years. So we just take that 2,200 divide by three, and that gives us the $733 and change to get to the ending carrying value, $5,000, which is the same as our salvage value. This one is units of production. Again, important information we must look at. Cost is $20,000. Salvage value is $15,000. Depreciable cost is $15,000, same as before. However, my useful life is now in miles, 100,000 miles, not in years. And so to calculate depreciation, I will take the units driven, divided by the useful life, and multiply it by the depreciable cost to get my depreciation in any given year. So the table is a little bit different. I've got a carrying value, but then I've also got a miles driven. And that's just for me to put the information somewhere. So you can see the first year we drove 10,000 miles. So 10,000 miles over 100,000 miles is 10% or 0.1. We take that 0.1 and multiply it by the depreciable cost of $15,000. And we've got annual depreciation of $1,500. We get on to the second year. We drove 25,000 miles. So we take the 25,000, divide by the 100,000, and we get the use, uh, we get the 0.25 to multiply by our depreciable cost of 15,000, or 3,750. Again, everything as we go from there is the same. Just notes I may have forgotten to notice. Again, beginning carrying value is still 20 grand, and then to calculate the depreciation every single time. Units driven divided by useful life, 100,000 miles, times that depreciable cost of $15,000 will give us our depreciation. Now you'll notice at the end of year four, I get to my salvage value. In that fifth year, I happen to drive it more. I don't depreciate it any further. I'm dealing with the units of production here, not with the useful life. So it's miles that matter, not time. Once the miles are done, I stop depreciating the asset.